It's Tuesday, November the 8th, 2016, and this is your Barbados Today afternoon update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, a sociologist and family life education worker has attacked the Barbados-based Caribbean Development Bank and the University of the West Indies for what she sees as promoting sexuality among children. Speaking at a town hall meeting at Queen's College last night that discussed contemporary threats to the family, Dr. Veronica Evelyn said children were being exposed to sex in a book produced by the CDB and the UWI. We are sexualizing our children and then we act as if we are surprised when they want to have sex. When you, from a little child, from three-year-old, the Caribbean Development Bank has just invested thousands, um, I don't want to give a figure because I can't remember it offhand, but thousands, I'm talking about six-figure, with the UWE to develop a curriculum in gender socialization for early, childhood for early childhood education. When we talk early childhood education, we're talking three to five year olds. Now, what is a gender sensitive school? What is gender socialization? What are you teaching these children? that they can be a male girl and a female boy. And there's, in book five of those books, there is an exercise that those children, and that book is full of inappropriate activities. There's an exercise, and at the end of it, it says, difference is good. Yes, it's true, difference is good. But the kind of difference where you are being trained away from who you really are, you are being trained to live an imitation life. The hierarchy of the police force is today sending a strong message of warning to people who stage unauthorized fets, particularly during this month of independent celebrations. Not only that, Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police in charge of administration, Erwin Boyce, is also putting organizers of social and entertainment events on notice that they won't be given approval if they applied for permission at the last minute. The whole issue of obtaining the requisite permission from the police to do certain events is very important and very vital to our work for its planning. So people can come at the last minute. We, we have set some deadlines. We have set some uh, time frames. So people can come at the last minute and say, well, I want an effect and I want to police or whatever. Because again, work, work, workforce planning is critical to the way we do things. And we must be conscious of the fact that we still have Barbados to police. And Barbados to police means all jurisdictions. It's very unlikely that they will get permission at the last minute. Very, very, very unlikely because we have, we have given time frames within the reporting period, within the application period, and uh, we will not tolerate any uh, unauthorized activity. Barbados will benefit from a multi-million dollar program aimed at assisting eight Caribbean countries to update their national implementation plans that relate to the exposure of toxic chemicals the project is being implemented by the Trinidad-based Caribbean Public Health Agency, or CARFA, and CARFA Executive Director Dr. James Hospitalis says the execution of this project will help strengthen the capacities of Barbados and other member states to better managers manage hazardous chemicals with a view to implementing environmentally sound mechanisms for the storage, abandonment of use, identification of alternatives to use, and final disposal and destruction of these types of chemicals. There are fresh concerns about the physical inactivity of Barbadians. In fact, University of the West Indies lecturer in health, Christina Howitt, described the situation as shocking. Howitt was addressing the World Town Planning Day Symposium at the courtyard by Marriott's Hotel in Christchurch this morning. She said the situation was even more worrying among women. That six out of ten men not getting enough activity is still a major health problem. And actually, you know, we know that men tend to, to die more from chronic diseases than women anyway, partly because of biology and partly because they don't seem to like going to the doctor. <laughs> so I don't know. We, are, we as 
public health people are told quite often not to alarm people with our statistics. But I don't know about you guys, I find this pretty alarming. This is terrible. Nine out of ten women not getting enough activity is pretty shocking. And compared to other populations, these are really high levels. We have to do something about this. There's regional and international news after this short break. Public bank just like Santa Claus. Maisie fix up the kitchen and a new TV we get in. A special time to commemorate. Republic will help you celebrate. Get ready to celebrate 50 years of independence right through to the best Bajan Christmas ever with a Make It Happen loan of up to $50,000 from Republic Bank. Give your home a good old Bajan spooza. Buy some new furniture and appliances or take an after-holiday trip to visit loved ones over and away. You could also be one of our lucky winners to share in fabulous prizes. Just visit any branch to apply. Go to RepublicBarbados.com or call us at 227-2700. We're also available via Skype and FaceTime. Special conditions apply. Public Bank, we're the one for you. It's an explosion of music like you've never seen. It's the best of Barbados at 50. It's Digicel Barbados is Music. One night, one stage, three of the best Bajan bands. Square one. Crossfire. Coalition. All together for the first time at Kensington Oval on November 29 for a once-in-a-lifetime performance. It's hit after hit after hit. It's Barbados is Music. We're back with news from the region now. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Alan Chastanet, has announced a reduction in the standard rate of value-added tax, VAT, from the current 15% to 12.5%. The long-awaited announcement came last night as Chastanet delivered an address to the nation. The reduction in VAT will take effect as of February 1, 2017. The Prime Minister says this means that an estimated $52.5 million a year will be pumped back into the hands of the people of St. Lucia. Under the big story on the global front now, Democrat Hillary Clinton and Republican Donald Trump face voters today as millions of Americans turn out on Election Day to pick the next U.S. president and end a bruising campaign that polls said favored Clinton. In a battle centered largely on the character of the candidates, Clinton, who's 69, a former Secretary of State and First Lady, and Trump, 70, a New York businessman, made their final of fervent appeals to supporters late on Monday to turn out to the polls. A Reuters Ipsos states of the nation poll gave Clinton a 90% chance of defeating Trump and said she was on track to win 303 electoral college votes out of 270 needed to Trump's 235. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarket and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.